Hey what's up guys, it's Nick with Indie Eagle, <clears throat> and today we will be working further on the RP uh, the platform game that we have started. Uh, we'll be adding in health, uh, lives, and maybe a little bit more. So let's start by opening up the characters sprite. And we'll just copy and paste this sub image. There we go. Now let's click this third one here. Go to image, opacity, and we'll leave it at 80. Now let's copy and paste this one again. Okay, now we have a nice flicker effect. You'll see when we've done that soon enough. So let's open up the uh, object now and make a create event. And we'll add in some variables. Okay, so what this is, is um, I may have explained global variables before, but I can't entirely remember. So basically, if you have a variable called um, money, and you uh, set it to 100, you will only be able to change this uh, variable's value in this object that you declared it in. However, if you add a global uh, in front of it, no matter what object you declare it in, you'll be able to change it in all objects. So that's useful with things like health and lives and things like that. So set HP and lives to global. And in events, you probably don't know what this is, so you'll see pretty soon. And XPOS and YPOS, it stands for X position and Y position. This can be called anything. I just thought this was a pretty descriptive variable name without having to type too much. We want to set this to the X and Y position of the object. Since this is in the create event, as soon as this object is created, this variable is declared and is set to the X and Y position. It doesn't change. So you'll see when we've done that too. So go into the enemy now and completely remove or the enemy collision inside of the player. Remove room restart. Okay, so basically if you don't collision with the enemy on top of his, like his head, you know, and you kind of touch him on like a side or something, then it'll remove 30 points from your health, set events to true, and alarm 0 to 30. Okay, so let's go up here and skip down a line and add something. Okay, now I'm just going to format my code real quick. You can if you want to, I just uh, like to keep everything looking nice and organized. Okay, now, as soon as you collision with the enemy, no matter where you collision with him at, it's going to check if an event equals false, then it'll uh, execute this code. If it's true, though, it'll just ignore every bit of this. So, that's set up so when you collision with the enemy on a side and you're damaged, you'll be invincible for a small period of time. In fact, let's bump this 50, this 30 up to about 70. This alarm zero right here, this is what determines how long you'll be invincible for. So, let's add in an alarm zero event. Okay, so once alarm zero uh, 70 is up, then it goes to this, sets events to false, and action sprite set SPR underscore ball zero zero. Okay, so I'll explain why we done this in just a moment. Let's go to step now, and skip down a couple of lines.
Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to be constantly checking if invents equals true, then it'll set image speed to 0 0.8. You don't want this to be a high number. And if it's not true, then it sets image speed to 0. So basically when you collision with the enemy, you're damaged and you'll turn invincible and the player will start to flicker a little bit to indicate to the um, person playing that you are invincible. And when events is set to false again, it'll go to image speed equals zero. And there's a possibility that when events is set to false, then he'll stop on a transparent sum image. So that's why we added in uh, action sprite set spr underscore ball zero zero. What this does is it sets the sprite back to spr underscore ball sub image zero with the speed of zero. Okay, so now when you collision with an enemy, then he will become invincible and flicker, and then when events is false, then he'll go back to his original state. Uh, he won't be transparent at all, you know, so that'll be good. You don't want him to end on transparent and play the rest of the game like that. So let's add in another object now, and we'll just name this obj underscore text and add in a draw event and this Okay, so remember I said that if you use a global variable, then any um, object can also use that variable. So that's what this is for. This is going to set it up so you can um, see how much health and how many lives you have left. So all this does is it draws the text to the X and Y position of this object. It draws some text called health colon space. This plus string global.hp is what allows it to display the value of your variable which is global.hp. Same goes for this one down here except it's set up for lives instead of HP. And this x plus 16, the reason I did that is so this won't be overlapping the HP uh, text. This is going to be 16 pixels below uh, the health text. Okay, and we don't want a sprite for this, so just leave it without one. And open up a room and put this right there. Okay, now let's go back into the uh, player for a second and go to the step event. Okay, so what we added here is it constantly checks if your health is below or equal to zero, then it sets your uh, health back to 100, takes away a life, and sets your I, X and Y position to the X position and Y position variable. Okay, so that's about it, so let's just run this real quick. As you can see, we have our health and lives up in the top left corner. And when he collisions with an enemy, he starts to flicker. And health is set to 70 instead of 100 now. And you cannot kill an enemy while you are uh, flickering. And when your health gets to zero, then you're back at the start. Health is back to 100 and life is set to 2. So that about does it for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll probably cover uh, game over screens and maybe something else. So 
Hope to see you then, and...